This is a view from above of the F-35. This other one is the F-22. This is the B-2 Spirit. And this one is the Sukhoi 57. Did you notice anything strange? Welcome to Millennium 7 Star, the channel that helps you make sense of military history and military technology. The four planes that we have seen at the beginning are all planes that incorporate a stealth design in their airframes. And in this video, we cover a specific aspect of stealth design that is not really well known. Did you ever notice how many parallel lines are there in a stealth aircraft? Aerodynamic surfaces leading and trailing edges are generally aligned, but also the edges of the openings of the airframes are aligned in the same way. So look how many parallel lines. Uh, for example, here, or here, or even here. An area where this type of design is really evident is on the doors of the weapon base, which seem more uh, so blade than an aeronautic structure. Well, we are all used to the mix of jagged and round design of stealth planes, but why these parallel lines? And to understand that, we need to step back and explain a few concepts. Rather stealth is obtained by two different classes of technical solutions, radar absorbing materials and structural geometry. In this video, we are not covering the radar absorbing materials, but we just focus on the geometry. The basic principle is rather simple. Do not reflect the radar waves back toward the emitter. Often to explain stealth, texts refer to an optic analogy. For example, the reason why the forward fuselage of a stealth plane is shaped like a speedboat is because in this way the reflection angles are such that the radar waves are not reflected toward the emitter. This is a correct analogy and this is the reason why you will never see a vertical fins or vertical side walls in a stealth plane. And it is also the reason why there are no exactly 90 degrees corners on a stealth plane. A 90 degrees corner has the property to always reflect the radiation back to the direction from where it came. Underwing pylons for weapons or engines since they are at 90 degrees with the wing itself, are among the most powerful reflectors. And for the same reason, the air intakes of the F-22 and the Sukhoi 57 are not square, but rather irregular lozenges. Actually, can you imagine the rather echo of a plane like the MiG-31? One consequence of the optic analogy is that stealthiness depends from the angle between the plane and the impinging radiations. Planes do not fly straight and flat all the time, radars are not always exactly at the same altitude, and so on. So, as the plane maneuvers, it might cause detectable radar reflection. And, for example, a look down radar might receive a much stronger echo than a radar at the same level, even if the plane is flying horizontally. This is the reason why pilots are trained on how to manage the radar signature of the plane. Uh, and they fly the plane trying to minimize the reflection toward the radars that could potentially identify them. This is also the reason why stealth is very effective against a single isolated plane or a group of non-integrated radars, but it definitely becomes less effective when various radars connected with a data link and integrated with a proper information fusion capabilities, they work together in the same airspace. If I'm not picking up an echo, my friend might, and it will tell me where the track is. Actually, China and Russia are working feverishly to achieve this type of integration in their air defense systems. There are actually other countermeasures that are progressively eroding the advantage of stealth, but this will be the subject of another video. 
In this video there is more. We got to the point where the optical analogy that brought us so far now is breaking down. Actually, if it was so easy, it would have had stealth many decades ago. So, the first consideration is that reflections depend from the frequency of the impinging radiation. In general, the longer the frequency, the less accurate is the no optical analogy. But, uh, the radar frequency has another implication. Radiation is not only reflected, but it also travels through the metallic structure of the plane that in this case acts like an antenna. If the size of the metal parts is right and some characteristic dimensions are in a specific relationship with the radar wavelength, then the structure may radiate energy itself. And guess what? The tip of the aerodynamic surfaces is one of those points where the radiation happens. The wing leading edge, for example, reflects some energy optically, but also emits a diffuse lob of energy from the wingtip, parallel to the leading edge itself. This effect in practice always happens with the most commonly used wavelengths, and while an accurate design can minimize it, obviously, uh, you can never in practice get rid of it. To be honest, this effect is actually beneficial in some cases, for example, when it comes to confuse automatic target recognition systems, but for a stealth plane, it is just a giveaway. So designers choose to have these lobes all aligned together in two directions. True, the eco will be stronger, but it will be just in those two directions. If the plane doesn't keep the wingtip pointed at the receiver, the radar may catch it just a glimpse, which will be quickly gone. And this is the reason why on stealth planes you have so many parallel lines. At the end of the day, designing a stealth plane like any other plane requires the balancing of the design requisites. Uh, designing for stealth is very complex because the actual equations that describe the reflections and the diffusion are very complex and they require a lot of computing power to be solved for an actual airframe. The result, as I said, is a compromise that must balance stealth with all the other features required by the plane and in general, I have to say, stealth ruins aerodynamics quite a lot. However, if you have to take away something from this video, take away this. Nothing in technology is as simple as it seems. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.